Hey friends, welcome back to the Guitar Max channel. So there is a guitar that everybody's talking about right now. This guitar is the lost Randy Rhodes prototype guitar. So basically, this is the third Jackson Rhodes prototype. And the deal with this guitar is that this guitar was made for Randy Rhodes in collaboration with Randy Rhodes, but he tragically died before he ever received the guitar. Now, the reason everybody's talking about it right now is that the guitar is up for auction. This guitar was essentially hidden away for decades, and now the owner, the current owner of the guitar, a guy named Sean Clegg, has finally put the guitar up for auction. So a lot of people have been debating about how much this guitar is really worth. And, and I've been listening to the arguments, you know, in favor of this guitar being sold at a really high price and other people who are more against that. And the thing overall is that I think some people are really missing the overall point of this guitar and they don't quite understand, uh, you know, the place that this guitar has in heavy metal history. Now I have a little bit of insider information on this because as you may know, I got to play this guitar recently and I'll put a link for that video down in the video description below. And of course it was incredibly cool to play the guitar but that's not what I'm going to talk about in this video. This video is really about the auction and the fact that this guitar is now being sold and how much is it going to sell for. Now right at the top here I want to say that this is not a sponsored video and I have no official affiliation with the auction house that's selling it or even, you know, the guy that owns it. So I'm not like getting paid or rewarded or anything like that, you know, for talking about this. It's just, I mean, obviously this is the Guitar Max channel. So I find this stuff fascinating. And like I said, I think some people are kind of missing the point with this guitar. Now I've got the basic article uh, on the auction house's website. Uh, the auction house is called Analogger, like Analog R. And I'm gonna go over this article with you guys but first, I just want to sort of recap a little bit of the basic story of this guitar and what has happened to it over the years. Now, real quick, if you enjoy videos like this, checking out cool guitars and also staying up on, a, on all the latest news in the guitar universe, and you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, so just to recap really quick here, this guitar was made in the early 80s, and this is considered the third prototype of the Jackson Rhodes V, uh, the first two guitars, the first two prototypes being the Concord uh, V guitars. So they were a little bit different than the Rhodes V that this guitar is, and of course the, the Rhodes V that we have today. The deal was that with those first two prototypes, there were some things about them that Randy didn't really like, and a lot of it had to do with the fret access and the shape of the body and that kind of stuff. And so he was talking with Grover Jackson, uh, who was, you know, obviously one of the top guys that made this guitar. And, you know, he, Randy had asked for some particular changes to be made. And so uh, Grover Jackson was working on this guitar. Uh, but again, Randy tragically passed away before he ever actually received this guitar. Now, the truly amazing thing about all of this is that this guitar uh, existed and was accidentally sold shortly thereafter uh, at the NAMM show, I think this was, this was in like January of 1983, right? It was accidentally sold. They had it on display there, but it wasn't really for sale. And then, you know, somebody acts like, oh, sure, you can buy this guitar, you know, a couple thousand dollars or 1500 something like that. And so they sold this. Then later on realized that, oops, that was, that was the Randy Rhodes prototype. So it, it changed hands a couple of times and landed with this guy named Sean Clegg, who has been you know, he's been the owner of this guitar basically since the mid 80s. And only now is he, you know, he's selling it and putting it up for auction. So there's two important things about this guitar. One is that this was built for Randy Rhodes and it was designed in collaboration with Randy Rhodes. And the other thing is that this is only the third guitar ever to carry the Jackson brand name on it. Now, a little quick backstory on that. Grover Jackson at the time was making guitars under the Charvel name. He had bought uh, the Charvel brand from Wayne Charvel a few years earlier, and so he'd been making the Charvel guitars. And this body style, you know, the V body style, was such a departure from the sort of Superstrat guitars that had been being made under the Charvel name that 
Grover Jackson was like, well, you know, maybe we should use a different name because I'm not really sure if this is going to be a success. I don't want it to damage the Charvel brand name. So they decided to just put Jackson on it. And this was only the third Jackson guitar ever made. And now, obviously today, decades later, Jackson has become arguably, you know, I would argue the most important guitar brand in the heavy metal genre. Now, the big criticism against this guitar uh, and, you know, against it being sold and valued at a really high price is that, well, you know, Randy never even played this guitar. It was made for him, but he, he never played the guitar or recorded anything with it. He never really had the guitar, so it shouldn't be worth that much. That's what people are saying. And while that is true, I think looking at it from that perspective really just misses the point of how important this guitar was and still is. Even if this guitar had no association with Randy Rhodes, this guitar is still incredibly important in terms of guitar history and heavy metal history. This offset asymmetrical V, this was the first version of this body style that we have today. And, and here's the thing, it wasn't just like, well, you know, it was, it was like a stepping stone or something like this. I mean, they got this body style and this overall design just dead on with this third prototype. And the Rhodes V has gone on to be an incredibly successful design. They've been making it nonstop since then, since the early 80s. And this was the guitar that launched the Jackson brand of guitars. And I think you can argue that if this guitar had never existed, either the Jackson brand would have never existed, or certainly, at the very least, the Jackson brand as we know it today would have never existed. And think of all of the, you know, the incredibly iconic heavy metal guitars that have come out of Jackson. The, the Rhodes V, the Kelly, okay? You know, Marty Friedman, right? All this stuff, you know, the Kelly. The Jackson Warrior, which is a personal favorite of mine. And then, of course, you have the Super Strats, like the Dinky and the Soloist. These are all iconic guitar models that have stood the test of time. And this guitar right here really started them all. Now, like I said earlier, I've got this article up here, so I want to go over this with you guys and just talk about some of the highlights of this guitar. So, we have it here. This is the article on Analogger, and they've got a beautiful picture right there. That's the guitar in its case. Now, look at this. Current bid, $107,933.66. And uh, you can increase the bid by 5%. So the next bid that somebody makes will bump it over 110000 Now let's uh, look down at this here. Now first of all, they've got a whole bunch of uh, really cool pictures. Now this is something that's kind of cool. You can see the headstock there. Something that I highlighted in the, the video earlier that I did about this guitar is that the Jackson logo, like I said, this is the third one they ever did. It was, you know, third Jackson guitar ever. So, you know, somebody hand-painted that logo on there. It's not like a uh, decal or anything like that, because they, they didn't have them. Um, now, if we look at some of the other photos here, uh, these are the, the pickups that are currently in the guitar. It's important to point out, these are not exactly the original pickups, although the guitar does come with the original pickups. These are Seymour Duncan pickups, and the guitar did originally have Seymour Duncan pickups, but it was a different set of Seymour Duncan pickups. And actually, uh, somebody uh, in the comment section of my earlier video point, made a really good point in that at that time, in the early 80s, Seymour Duncan did not label their pickups Seymour Duncan. They didn't have any labeling on the, on the face of them, right? So when you see them like this where it says Seymour Duncan on them, you know that's from a later era. Now there's also a uh, close-up here of the brass hardware on this guitar, which gives it a really distinctive look. Looks really beautiful. Obviously, it's a, it's a string through body design, as you can see from this here. And there's the back of the guitar. And another thing about this guitar, which you can kind of see here, is that this is a neck through body design. And that was one of the reasons why Grover Jackson wanted to use a different brand name on this guitar, is because all the Charvel guitars were bolt-on necks. And with this guitar, they were going to a, a neck through body design here. And another thing you can see here on this picture, which is kind of unique about this guitar, is that the inlays are kind of backwards. They're kind of reversed from how they would normally be. They're pointing sort of upwards, whereas 
uh, the inlays on most Jackson guitars, and certainly the ones today, they point down. Here's the article here. So, it starts off, Randy Rhodes didn't like several aspects of the white Jackson Offset V RR1. So he commissioned Grover Jackson once again to craft him another guitar, the Black Jackson Offset V RR2. According to Rhodes, the fretboard went too far into the body of the white Jackson RR1, making it much more difficult to reach the higher frets. The Black Jackson, the second version, allowed for much more travel up the neck of the guitar. Secondly, the new RR2 would have more definition on the upper wing than the first version to avoid any confusion between Jackson's custom masterpiece and a Gibson V. Right, so they didn't want it to look like a traditional flying V. It goes on here, Grover Jackson had plans to build Rhodes two more guitars, but he waited until he received proper feedback from Rhodes about the RR2. Randy was able to call Grover Jackson and give him his criticisms of the second version of the RR2, but due to his unfortunate passing on March 19, 1982, Randy Rhodes never received the next two guitars. Grover put away the next two guitars, the RR3, which this one is, and the RR4, until the NAM show. At the NAM show, the RR3 prototype was accidentally sold. This is the Jackson guitar that is now being offered for sale. Now they go on to point out here that basically the first two guitars are currently owned by the Rhodes family and that this guitar here, uh, you know, for one, Randy never, never received the guitar. Uh, and then also, again, with a the story there, it being accidentally sold at the, at the NAMM show. I mean, imagine, you know, realizing, realizing what had happened after the fact. And that's, that's, uh, that's what nightmares are made of for, uh, for guitar players, I think. Now, further down here, they go on uh, to have some, you know, some specs about uh, this guitar here. It's, it's string through body construction, custom brass hardware, handmade brass hardware, ebony fingerboard with backwards shark fin inlays, a Jackson logo, hand painted, no serial number on this guitar. It's just, it's just number three. Okay, you know, this was before they did serial numbers. Uh, neck through body with mahogany wings clearly visible. So I believe the center, the neck and the center is uh, maple and then it's got mahogany wings on the outside. And then now we have a picture here of Sean Clegg uh, with Grover Jackson. Sean is of course the guy who currently owns it. And uh, his quote there, best playing guitar ever in my humble opinion. Okay, so that's the article over on the auction website. And they sort of highlight some of the things I'm talking about there, but I think the thing that a lot of people are really missing, you know, even though, yes, Randy Rhodes never actually play, played this guitar. This guitar, this was the guitar, not the Concord, but this guitar. This was the one that really launched Jackson into a big, successful company. And this guitar here is basically the one that we are playing today. This is my Rhodes V here. Um, you know, I've, this is a, a cheap one that I've done a bunch of mods to. I've replaced the nut and the bridge and the pickups and all kinds of stuff. I love this guitar. And if you look at this guitar and you look at the design of that, uh, that original one, they are almost identical. You know, just the things like the inlays and, and that kind of stuff are different. But the body, the shape of the body, the bevels, the, you know, the neck profile, all this stuff, it's exactly the same. That there is a direct line between this guitar that we're talking about that's currently being auctioned. There is a direct line between that guitar and the Rhodes V that we have today. They got it right with that prototype. And, and like I said, so many incredible, iconic players have played Jackson guitars over the decades. You know, without the Jackson brand and all of those amazing heavy metal models, heavy metal models rather, that, that the company produced, I don't think heavy metal would exist as it does today. It, it really, that brand went on to be that important, in my opinion. So yes, the connection to Randy Rhodes is incredible, but I think the fact that this guitar was essentially the guitar which launched the Jackson brand and then went on to have a huge impact on heavy metal music in general, I think that is what makes this guitar so valuable. But what do you guys think? I asked this question in my previous video and I wanna ask it again. 
if you had just money, you know, more money than you need, let's say you had like $10 million sitting in the bank and you can, you know, you can buy whatever guitar you want, how much would you pay for this guitar? Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I'm gonna have links for everything I was talking about in this video down in the video description below. I'll put a link to the article I was reading. I will also put a link to my earlier video, you know, about this guitar where I get to play the guitar and everything. I'll have all those links down in the video description below. Guys, thanks a ton for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you soon.